Okay, hello. So <clears throat> this is supposed to be a discussion about the solution I'm trying to find out for a problem of how we store the kernel configs uh, for our kernel branches. And the, the problem uh, I see with that is that we store it along with the rest of the kernel in the good repositories. And it's sometimes hard to track why we have set things in a certain way. There are some commits that change a lot of values, and there is nearly no description why that has changed. And sometimes we accidentally revert or rewrite the config options that were not supposed to be changed. And basically, that's something that <clears throat> I think is important to not to do for a subset of kernel config options that are important and have far-reaching consequences. And that when I looked at the problem, uh, I think that one possible solution I started to play with is to track uh, expected values of a few important options in some kind of database somewhere, and use that to validate the configs uh, to make sure that things are set as they are supposed to. And my attempt uh, could be described by that piece of JSON. Basically, uh, the, there are multiple dim dimensions to, to the data. Uh, we have to consider uh, different settings for different architectures and also for different distributions. And uh, the, I would like to discuss uh, with you how, if, if something like that would be useful, and how the data and where the data should be stored. So that, that's my introduction, and I would really like to start the discussion with you about this thing. Look into uh, typical sources of uh, config changes, because it's my understanding that those usually happen as run old config on kernels when we rebase. And that's probably the 99% of those uh, config changes. Other than that, they're usually v v very well documented because that's a feature request and somebody changing those documents that. But I think that uh, the biggest problem is when we do run all, conf uh, run all config because that's where thousands of potentially config yeah. options might be changed. Yeah, that's, that's true. And some, sometimes, uh, actually, when I, uh, I started to look into the config option changes at the point we uh, got the configs from Tumbleweed into SLE, and we were trying to find out what should be said differently. Uh, and uh, Takashi was comparing the differences between the previous SLE and the current config. And I was looking at the Git history, and it was really random. Sometimes there was a description why the change was done, sometimes not really. And sometimes the different architectures were changed in different patches that did not really explain anything. So it's, it's kind of the mess in the Git history. Uh, so what you're saying right now is just another variant of uh, the patches in any package. Why did they appear? Why did they drop? So with the, with the change log, uh, which is forced to mention any removed or uh, added patches. So, uh, I'm not saying this is not important or useful, but I think it would be even more important to generate the kernel config by some uh, algorithmic means. Uh, and yeah. maybe later check it. Checking is also important. I, just last week uh, I found out that you got to have some unwinding uh, information, some uh, stack unwinding, because um, then the RPM build in the build servers will not run in the spec file. It'll just, so yes, it's useful, but even more useful it will be to have some system with includes and things and yeah, minimal config, um, dev config to generate a consistent uh, config. Actually, the, this is something like that, the, that Red Hat does. They have a big Git repository, and they have one file per config option in there. And they uh, they use that to patch the config before the build, but I do not see that this is, this is better than having a checker. Not not one file per config option. Yeah, yeah. But but some rules some rules that that set it up like uh, like saying uh, 
floppy before it gets completely disabled, say, unless we do it five years earlier and say, okay, everything that is in that directory refers to depends on floppy. No. Everything that is, and we've been discussing this traditionally, we've been trying with all module config, but that's from the very early times of Linux when you were happy that you had a driver and you would compile it. So nowadays, you would keep it on no unless there's a customer uh, reference like you have here with the, uh, with the Jira saying, okay, not no graphics cards unless, okay, these are popular, these are popular, here's a customer who wanted it, and so apps have some include mechanism algorithm that generates it first. That would be my proposal, it's even uh, more important, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I would actually like to support you because the um, a common issue is not when a config option was changed. That is usually accompanied with a good comment that has some explanation. The, uh, the main issue I've had was um, well, if you store the complete config, then you have to decide on every config option. So when a new option appears in upstream, someone will have to make an educated guess. And then later, it turns out that you want to have that option. There might be even a feature request for that. And someone just looks up the current config and says, well, we have that option already on and nothing appears anywhere. And we, the link between the feature request and the config is lost forever. Yes, yes, and then somebody made to disable that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the thing uh, with generating configs from somehow more abstract dis descrip description is that it would require much more work than this because if, if you have this, I have 100 lines of uh, Python that actually take that and check if the config is complete. So I was hoping for having something easy and short. So, so a related issue that we need to keep in mind is that there are not only the SLE branches, but that Tumbleweed is also something that we've needed to take into account. And, uh, in particular, when we've needed to like frequently update the config files, and yes, uh, Michael is smiling at me because he knows what we're talking about here, is that you know someone at some point needs to go through um, any of the new options and take decisions as to um, you know should something be built in a module um, or, or simply disabled. And sometimes it's just the defaults that are being accepted and sometimes there is some explicit decision and it's very hard afterwards to figure out what actually led to then that option being yeah, in there. Yeah, and the point is if, if we had explicit decision in something like that, we could check easily. Well, the thing is that if what you, uh, one of the things you were suggesting was, you know, should we, or what Thorsten was suggesting was, you know, should we have some other way of different files that are, you know, not a singular k-config file uh, where oh, that right. would be generated from. And what I'm saying is, if we do it that way, then frequently updating things with new config options coming in is probably going to be harder for the person doing it. Or whether we do a combination of some that we explicitly record in our tree and some that are simply then amended by the um, you know, config choice by something afterwards. Yes, something. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah, maybe a response for the generator. I think that already there is generator for config files in kernel that uh, at least x86 has the default file, defaults file in the repository and it generates the def config. Yeah, my whole idea is based on that. So this is given uh, and then okay. built on that. So like you do uh, make def config, gives the default everywhere. And then you say, okay, a kernel with default everywhere is acceptable, except I need this and this and this and this, and then from there on take all the defaults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, I want to respond to that. And second, or a question for Cyril is, uh, these config options or the decision is made in scope of 
product or something. Or yes, because yes. Be that's, that's another dimension that is not in the JSON. Uh, because either we complicate this format uh, with having a list of uh, <laughs> distribution it applies on, or we keep multiples of this file because this this is very multi-dimensional dimensional problem. You have the architectures, you have the distributions, and you have the flavors for the kernel. So we have a lot of dimensions. So it would have to be composed somehow. So you would have, for example, for C16 you would have this set, and for RT there would be additional file with few more constraints. We we have a, at least yeah. three dimensions yeah. that we have but to take care of. Yes, and w do you think because you say distributions, but we because the way how it would be implemented would be the branches. So yeah, of course, of course. Okay, so so uh, should put. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to correct what Peter said about the educated guess. When it comes to tumbleweed kernel, actually, vast majority of config options are set by a completely uneducated guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> made one one person in a really short time frame when it uh, goes close to RC1, and only very few are then fixed later when someone notices that something is completely wrong. That's why we usually, when we uh, switch to a new, new base kernel for next Slee product, uh, we start the process where maintainer of, of subsystems in our team should go over the configs and review the config options and set them accordingly. Uh, how well they do and how responsibly they do, that differs, of course, a lot. But, uh, well, for the tumbleweed, uh, please do not rely on new config options be, being set by some educated guests. If you want to make it so, please review master branch after each RC1 before the configs hit tumbleweed. Just to make sure that I understand, so uneducated guess you mean def config or yep. uh, default uh, answers. That's another note I wanted to make. Def config would be essentially unusable because uh, right now it seems that for most config options, in particular drivers, def configs just says no. So <laughs> uh, not for Tumbleweed, definitely. Yeah, so usually most of the driver options are set by me looking at uh, similar options around and if most of them are yes or module, then I try to use similar approach. If most of them around are no, no then no. And uh, well, uh, mostly these are new flavors of say network cards, graphics cards, uh, storage devices. And we usually want most of them, at least those that uh, often are around on x86 hardware, uh, to be enabled uh, pro, yeah, as modules, if possible, of course. Yes, so, sorry for being dumb here, but uh, why? Uh, why don't we want to wait for users to actually start requiring that and so that we can track that somebody really wants that and use that? I mean, in Tumbleweed, where we can change the config option at any time, right? Two answers. First of all, because not every user is actually going to do that. Some will actually try something, and if it doesn't work, they're going to, you know, Raspberry Pi OS or anything else. Um, and the second thing is that it's, you know, like a um, bandwidth slash capacity uh, bottleneck if Random users um, of Tumbleweed need to create bug reports, and then one of you needs to sit down and you know and submit individual kconfig options for a product that we don't officially support. Uh, okay, that that cannot stand. In in case of bottleneck, the problem is that if with with every new radio 
video, humidity sensor, whatever, we get more upstream fixes to apply. And there is also a bottleneck. This is not, I mean, I can understand why we want new network, car, network cars or SCSI adapters, but we do not want every new acceleration sensor. Uh, for the, uh, this, I, I don't remember what was this, I, I something. Uh, Industrial. I, I, uh, these uh, things like acceleration, humidity, and whatever sensor, sensors, uh, most of them are disabled. In, yeah. Uh, but what I was talking about, uh, I only most uh, mostly want yes, are things like graphics card, yeah, but, uh, the normal hardware. Let's say all the, all these uh, physical sensors are uh, mostly disabled. Now I have the utmost respect for your person, but you doing this in an undocumented, unformalized way is not the uh, most optimal solution. Uh, all I can, I can say to this is, if you want to, this to be documented, maybe uh, you should try an experiment. When RC1 reaches master branch, take that commit, uh, revert the changes to config to what was before that commit and try to run, run old config as age and then try to set all new config options and document why you set each to respectively. That's impossible. That, that's why it needs to be automated. Well, let me. Um, <laughs> actually, the Linux wanted to have a um, default, default configs to be kept in somehow in upstream and, but the, the idea was discussed among um, distributors, but uh, it didn't succeed, so vanished. But I think it's time to think again. So basically, we can put our default configuration on for the Tumble Witch and the uh, upstream tree for the SUSE, for example. And this can be updated by at each, of course, uh, the kernel version update, but we have to work on that. So I think the problem is that it's left to Michelle, just for the edu educated guess. Yeah. And, but basically it's, that's for our responsibilities for, for us all. And so I think it's better to have a review for e at least for each kernel up before the each kind of version update, so how the configs have been, uh, will be updated, and we can decide for our own kernel. Well, there, when there is a new option that looks like, hey, this is really important, and I have yeah. absolutely no clue, then I often ask people yeah, yeah. who are supposed to know better. Yes, but maybe it, it might be good that to, for example, you can post before then, yeah, I'll see. RC1 or so for the review, yeah, check for the review or so. Yeah. Well, that can be actually done because uh, recently, like, like in last year or perhaps even two years, uh, usually uh, to minimize the workload when RC1 is out, I'm actually doing merge window snapshots like three or four, which are actually in kernel source gate yeah. in a separate branch. And I'm actually building those in a, in my home project. It's home mkubesek uh, RC0. So anyone can take a look there and ask me if see if they see something wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. But uh, no one will do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, bad, bad actually, <laughs> almost no one uh, yeah. even responds when it uh, reaches master branch before yeah, yeah. that is final and it's, it's just copied into uh, stable. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's my, my idea. Some, somehow the um, so digest of the changes can be posted to the kernel, so the, um, kernel mailing list just for the quick review. Yeah, but that still does not solve the problem I'm trying to solve yeah. because I'm trying to have some kind of guards around the most important config options. A review does help, but still that's error prone, right? 
Yeah, sure. That, that's a different kind of issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's a slightly different problem because what I'm trying to do is to have some automation that guards the important stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that. And uh, we hit the problem at the time of the Alp kernel, yeah, to merging from the tumbleweed to and stuff. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that um, the kernel config file is, uh, yeah, that's a flash whole, so including the flash list of the configurations. But the, many of them, I, I, I don't know how, how much percent, but are just so automatically selected, no uh, prompt items. And I don't know whether we can filter out that such leave. So, so, um, so, so to say that, um, yeah, so we can pick up only the kernel config items that's choosable. Then maybe that amount of the items can be much reduced, at least. And the other items can be basically get rid of the, our configuration. Yes, yeah, the idea that was discussed here just before that we would generate the config somehow from the smaller set yeah. that we uh, that we care for. But still, I think in, even in that case, we would like to have the links to the Jira or some kind yes, of descriptions. Yes. Um, but in that case, we can keep that file somehow in, with comments. It's not necessary to be completely overwritten. So that source, source config file can be kept in our own format somehow. So that maybe can, <laughs> could be in JSON or whatever format. But then we can generate the whole kconfig file from that. That might yeah, make you happy too. Uh, I still think that this, is, this problem is way too complicated for us to be able to actually generate the whole thing from a reasonable small amount of options. Uh, there is a practical problem with that, and there is that there is no transitivity between depends and select. So we cannot reduce the configuration in a way that is safe. If something changes, it breaks. The other thing I wanted to point to is I sent you a message over Slack on an example of an implementation that hooks into uh, a reduced example of a um, implementation that hooks into key build. So it prevents the kernel from building unless the configuration is uh, what you consider acceptable. Uh, that's a much reduced uh, example. Uh, maybe you want to show it uh, on screen. Uh, and I can comment on a few things that I see now on this example and how that could be implemented there. Because it does uh, things are slightly different, of course. Yeah, the, the thing is that I do not really care how exactly the database look like or how the data are stored. Uh, I just want to agree on some general idea that this is important or not, and if we should invest into figuring out how, how to do exactly the checks. Uh, I think both are important. Generating the configs, of course, and also checking because the generation of a config could get broken in several ways, including people changing things because it's, the documentation could fail to provide enough reasons not to change something and then people changing it. And the checker uh, could be scrutinized better. Hopefully getting you back on track with that. Uh have you tried to look into how many of those configs we have that we really have to ensure they don't change? I mean, ballpark, like 100,000 <laughs> or... This is very hard to tell, but, you know, for, uh, for, the, for the formal app now, the platform war, uh, we disabled a lot of stuff on purpose. And I would like to have constraints for all of that, and that would be hundreds, maybe. There are a couple of file system disabled, a couple of old drivers disabled, and so on and so on. It adapts probably to hundreds. So mostly to document what we intentionally disabled rather than what we intentionally uh, enabled? 
Intentional disabled would be a big part of that, but even then, there are things like the, the example config hurts that we spend two weeks figuring out how to set them, and I do not want them to change at all unless we spend another two weeks thinking about how the stuff should be changed. Exactly, because, uh, I mean, we, we would pretty quickly realize that um, um, SMT is just disabled, right? But uh, with things like uh, config hertz or, I don't know, transparent huge pages yeah. or uh, um, multi-generation LRU and, and those things, uh, there's so many of them that I'm not really sure that uh, having a checker is, is a good idea to make sure that we preserve that. I, I'm, I'm just worried how much of that work of the work that would be, and whether that's achievable, whether we have time to do that. Because if we are talking about tens of thousands of config options, then I'm not really sure we can do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking that we will have, I was hoping that we will have core options, like something like 100, that would be really important, and we wouldn't care that much about the rest, that would be still manageable, even if we uh, multiply that by the number of flavors we have to care for, because most of the time we would just copy the copy the old set and change a few things, and that would apply to the new code stream. At least that's what I hope for. I believe this is how the band does it for years, actually. Yeah. For the architectures and variants. I send you the details. To your mailbox and oh, others. Oh, good. So there is some, some Python script configuration and few flavors. There is some prior R there. Good. So I, I just came in, so I don't. I apologize if you covered this already. Is there any part of the checker that will detect when? I mean, ha half the options that are set are set just because they were the, the default when a choice had to be made. I mean, Mikkel knows this as well as I do. And there's usually not much more thought that goes into it than that. It's just, this was the default. Is there any way to detect when the default has changed upstream so that that choice can be flagged as being perhaps needing to be revisited? Not, mm, that's not a problem I was trying to figure out, but it could be done, I guess, and it would be useful. Yeah, yeah, the change in the upstream, and that's one of the reasons we had to look at that as well. So when when uh, we were working on the Alp uh, configs, um, I think one of the problem was the same configuration option was different uh, uh, between arcs, right? And we were trying to um, make it sure that it's it's the same. Uh, so can we not just have a checker like which which you know? Um, where we have to add exception if, if uh, ARC need to have a different config option than the others. Um, and unless there is an exception, we do not you know, accept that and make sure that the, the configs, configs just matches. Yeah, I would call this an implementation detail, really, because you know, uh, I haven't decided on anything. I this is just the example, Jason, how the stuff may, oh, sorry may be structured, uh, but the, the details, uh, the devil is in the details. We would have to figure out how exactly uh, the, the data should be structured. My idea is that uh, the, the values are either there is a, some kind of default with some value and then overwrite for architectures, or in the case that the values are uh, mostly different, that it will be listed like that, and we can, we can make the format slightly better, but that's, that's not really important, I think. Yep, uh, then another problem would be to maintain this database. As Michel pointed out, I mean, there could, if, if, it, it, yeah. if it's big, if it becomes big, it will be very difficult to maintain it and then it will lose its... Uh, yeah, it will lose, lose the value. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah that's the so, real... So, I mean, if we can have, have it in a way which, which is automated, like, uh, um, I don't know, what, what would be that? What would that what would that be? Uh, but I mean, if we are if we are trying to maintain it by hand, it it will rot very quickly. 
I do not see how we can easily automate that, unfortunately. I don't think there, there is actually going to be that much changes to this database. Yeah? This, like the big changes are going through the upstream, basically, def con uh, like configuration changes. But if this, these are going to be like only the explicit change requests for the config options, like explicit requirements we got via Jira, then I don't expect to really have like thousands of these. Yeah, well, by the way, uh, do you have some plan when to store this? Because if yeah. we store this together with the uh, kernel sources, then we might have basically the same problem exactly. as with the original config, because with the merge, we will have to that's, that's an open question as well, yeah. where to store the databases. And it might be safer to have separate repository just for these files, because otherwise we would it would be prone to accidental rewrites as well. I can add one more argument because if we store that separately, we can also include descriptions that are on the A. Of course. I think one point that we might interpret into your previous question is whether it might sense to not only speak about one checker, but to maybe have like separate different kinds of checkers, which could even have st data stored in different locations. So just as you know, like an additional train of thought that we don't need to decide on one particular format to do that, but maybe you know do the check across architectures as one script and then separately you know particular fixed values. Um, for which we would still need to figure out how to deal with the different flavors then, which is you know, not yet covered in that example here. But uh, yeah. As well, yes. And, and the third one Yusuf was, uh, was adding is you know, just detecting upstream default changes. So maybe <clears throat> I would like to know if I should invest more into exploring this. So if anybody who thinks that this kind of work would be useful, if you can raise a hand so I, that I can get some state, statistics or data, how many people would like to see this happen? I can give you conditional hands <laughs> up. And, and that condition is that we know how many, uh, how large of the database really yeah. is. So uh, I, I guess that in order to move forward, the tool is the least interesting part yeah, of that whole thing. Yeah, exactly. The, the only important thing is that we know what we actually absolutely have to have enabled and why. And uh, and if that grows really large and maybe, I'm not even sure we know what everything, it might be just completely random look. I, I can have a look at memory management kind of configs and and tell you what we really want to have enabled. Do we have that for the whole kernel? I'm not really sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to start somewhere and put all the uh, Jira tickets that actually touch some config option into uh, into the database first that start with that. But it's valid concern. We we should look at how this should be how big the database would be and how manageable it would be. It it doesn't have to start extensive. It, yeah. It could be a best effort thing and we see something break and add it and so on. Just as a follow up, um in your vals you have architectures, is there a way to specify flavors as well? Uh yeah, that's actually have been discussed here a few times. Uh this is another dimension to the problem and it's uh, if you start adding the flavors into the JSON it gets very ugly because you will have multiple arrays of the values per the flavor and I was thinking that it maybe would be easier to have uh, these files per the flavor in the directories and when we would have a new kernel we would copy the last 
uh, flavor, review that, and use that from, from that point on. So, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, that it would get messy quickly, but I kind of wonder, I mean, config hertz is a specific example because there's two values across five architectures, but for other things, if there's an exception, I mean, it seems to me that, like there should be a, a yeah. key default that is, of and, course. and then everything else is an exception. And then you could do flavors that way so that the fla like a one line for flavor is just the exception. Sure, sure. The, the config has this the most complicated example for the file system we disabled on purpose. It's just the list of config options and they are disabled for all flavors newer than something. Right. As I, actually, I tried to do that in the first version of the format and it was kind of okay, but it grew complex, more complex, the JSON. So we would probably need some tooling on the top of that to modify the files because doing that by hand, it uh, gets more complicated. Yeah, and uh, just an idea uh, regarding the scope of, of this. Uh, I guess that we would like to uh, put there uh, every config that ha had has been changed because of some G Jira uh, request or some Bugzilla request. So we might yeah, that's, that's also the look initial back scope. Uh, and the question if it's actually doable to, to check uh, how many Bugzilla numbers and uh, Jira numbers are uh, in commits that change the config files. I am not sure if it gives any reasonable... Well, there are some, but for some changes that there is nothing in the kernel log. A few of the config options that looked important to me were changed as a part of a big messy change. And really, it's not that easy to look up things based on the Git history we had. Uh, I, I just wonder if just some simple grab uh, git log for this config directory and just grab for bugs yeah. numbers and, and, and Jira numbers some, should should return some number of lines and yeah. that that could yeah. be some rough estimate. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I joined a bit later, uh, but we all I believe most know that smash exists to track things. So what if you had a tool like outside with a database that could track users, could have like some sort of aud audited logs, and then this tool is spit it out, like the, the config that you would use in the end. So you, would, you wouldn't really need to deal with JSONs. You could have a massive database with thousands of versions with thousands of configs and this would do magically your config select of the version, the architecture, boom, there is a config there for you, ready to use. Yeah, but somebody would have to enter that data and that's, that's the scalability problem. Yes, yes but you, you, you mentioned that we could start with the known values that it should always be there and since you have a kernel config already, just take those and input like the entire file. Uh, and that does not work. That would like be default, default. Because, because that, that, like I, I used to be in the automotive team and we had a kernel, a, a very different kernel config than what is shit with Isli. And we went around asking why you have this enabled, why you have that enabled. No one knew the answer and they always said, it always has been like this. So that was the answer for majority of the kind of configs. It always been like this. Someone chose that 10 years ago, and it is still there. And sometimes there is, do we really need that? No one knows, but since it's always been there, you can't really change because it could possibly break a customer. So you don't change, you don't touch it. But with SUS framework or whatever, uh, it's least 16, you could introduce possibly some breaking changes if you want to. It's, it's a different code base, it's a different product, so just an idea. <laughs> okay then, thank you for your attention and questions. And yeah, I guess that we will follow up on the kernel mailing list with that.